This is Mule Boy and you're watching Agoraphobic News. Hey, hey, Miller's here, uh, sitting with uh, Mule Boy of Bongzilla. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, it's good to be here. Our first time. Uh, are you excited about your first time in Belgrade? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So yeah. you like never been here in Serbia before, no, right? No, not to Serbia, no, no. Uh, yeah, and we walked into hash and marijuana, so it's going to be a good night already. <laughs> yeah, uh, can you tell us something about your uh, biggest influences as a guitar player? Oh God, Tony Iommi, uh, uh, Matt Pike, uh, uh, Joe Walsh, uh, Jimmy Page, yeah. And uh, who inspired you to uh, to sound like that uh, vocal voice? Oh, uh, I think it, I don't know if I'm inspired by like black metal or anything because that's what it sounds like to me. I think it was more, uh, I wanted the music to be groovy, but I was angry about marijuana not being legal in the U.S. So I think that's where the vocals came from. Uh, I love I Hate God. That might be some of it, too. Bands like Cavity, Buzz Oven. Do you like Ohm, Ohm and bands like... Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Al's friend of ours. And yeah, Ohm, Sleep, super big influence on us. For sure. And uh, what is your uh, all-time favorite, Dope Throne or Dope Smoker? Oh, Dope Smoker. Dope Smoker. Why? Uh, it's longer. I like how it progresses better. Uh, yeah, you know. Uh, we had it on a tape before anybody had ever heard it. We had it on a cassette tape because we were recording with Billy Anderson who recorded it. So he gave us a tape of it because he knew we were huge Sleep fans. So. And uh, how did you feel about it when you first time heard that record? I was in disbelievement that it not only was so long, but that it didn't get boring as you listen to it. And it's, it's, there's not many records you listen to and you feel like you can feel, feel the spiritualism that they're trying to create. But that record, for sure, you can. Yeah. That's cool. And uh, you know uh, the guy from Anthrax, Scott Ian, yeah, uh, that bald guy? <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's like uh, allergic to THC huh? and is that like the worst thing uh, thing that can happen to someone? I, I think so, that or it gives people panic attacks too which I think is horrible uh, you know it, it's it's definitely not for everyone but uh, but the people it helps are you know it, it really can help people and it keeps me functioning in the real world so to speak you know you never been like paranoid or uh, because of the weed or something like that. Yeah, I mean I've been paranoid, but I've always thought, oh, that's just the weed making me paranoid. <laughs> like I remember sitting in a room and thinking people were talking about me, and then, like, it hit me like, how, wh who am I that I'd be so special that they're whispering about me? And then it, you know, you just fight through it. Classic paranoia. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And are you guys like some sort of uh, marijuana activists or? Uh, just with the music, I don't do a lot of protesting. We, there's a lot of uh, marijuana festivals in the U.S. these days, and we'll we'll always play and not, you know, usually play for just marijuana. So yeah, in that sense, yeah. But I'm not protesting a lot. I'm not involved in groups like Normal or anything. I think I think I do. We do our part just by spreading. Like, Bongzilla is an extension of our lives. Even when we didn't play, I smoke pot as much as I do now. So we just spread it through how we live more than, like, conscious activism, you know. But I guess I'm an activist in the sense that I live it so much and, you know, it's spread out just by me being somewhere. <laughs> and uh, how would Bongzilla sound like if there was no weed at all? <laughs> Probably grindcore <laughs> yeah the probably a gorephobic norms bleed or pig destroyer like oh god yeah oh yeah i like grindcore i like pig destroyer more because they're not just uh, totally grindcore up, right right they mix it up i like how a gorephobic doesn't take themselves too seriously too you know it's it's a lot of humor in their yeah, songs yeah, that's that's what grindcore is to me it should be funny it should 
you know? You're playing music that your average person could never listen to, you know? But I like really extreme, I like Mirthball and Sun and, you know, but we all grew up on Skinner and Sabbath and Zeppelin and uh, James Gang and, you know, shit like that. Uh, and uh, what is the idea behind the uh, uh, American album cover? Because it's ca it, it kind of looks like a political and... Oh, uh, yeah, well, we had been at war in Afghanistan, I think, in Iraq and Afghanistan for at least five or six years at that point. And I have many friends that were in the army and out of the army and they're marijuana heads. Afghanistan, when we went in there, it brought a lot of hash to the U.S. because military people can buy, fly without customs. Uh, so I think it was like a comment, not on like gateway, everybody says it's a gateway drug. It, it was a commentary about what maybe is really going on in the world as I see it. Like these, these many, many military people become smugglers and are making extra money, you know, and that, that was what it was speaking to that, you know, this is, they're, and they're getting high, you know, they're tested more these years, but, but like, yeah, we're fighting this stupid war and our country's horrible, but, you know, if we all maybe smoke pot, would those guys even want to shoot bullets anymore? You know, would would people want to fight over oil <laughs> or be too lazy to? <laughs> you know, there's a funny story uh, back in the 90s uh, when there was Yugoslav civil war going on. Uh, there were like Dutch soldiers here who uh, were supposed to go to Srebrenica or something like that where okay. the massacre right, was, right. where it took place. And, sure, uh, sure. They were like on weed 24-7 uh, and they didn't want to shoot anyone, so... Yeah, exactly what I'm saying. If if leaders maybe got high instead of drinking when they're having meetings, it, it might be different endings, you know? And there's like a verse in your song which says uh, like uh, load bongs, not guns. Yep, yep, but gun THC, yeah, which is just another... That's a commentary for me on... on our, dr our gun policy and I mean in the last I think four years more people have died in Chicago than I Iraq and Afghanistan combined and because of the criminal because of gang wars yeah and drug drug turf and yeah it's 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 crazy I mean uh, since the Americans uh, occupied Afghanistan uh, I mean uh, there is a lot of uh, heroin going on around the world yeah, so how replant it because that the Taliban did have the export of heroin in that country really you know say what you want I don't know that much about like to me if you don't live in a country to speak about their politics and how their people feel is ridiculous like you pull into a country and as a kid in America you learn this but I try to put all that aside and, and meet people and see because people are people you can be anywhere in the world and people are people and so what we learn about each other as ch as kids in America or Serbia or you know Russia or Japan it's not my experience ever you know my experience is people are people some but, people suck some people are wonderful but my main question was like uh, uh, what do you feel about heroin because oh, it's oh. like the worst drug yeah, yeah I shot I actually shot dope for seven years I hate it Marijuana saved me from that too, you know. I spent seven years of my life as a pincushion, and I would not. It, it, if you get on a drug that ends up being like tobacco, where every day is a maintenance and you're not getting high anymore, don't start. You know, no matter how great those first hundred highs are or whatever, just don't start because there's going to be a day it turns into hell in that that I remember sitting on a couch and screaming what did I do to myself going through dope sickness you know so and I'm one of 15 percent of a hundred percent of people that don't ever get clean you know so I feel lucky and you know a lot of people people die of heroin it's horrible I mean yeah no and I think like at least in our country our government brings much of it in to keep certain uh, parts of society where they are you know, keep the drug addicts high on drugs. But a drug like crack or heroin that 
they can't function on to change the world, right? Marijuana you can function on to change the world. LSD changes the way you think so much, you might go get fucking nuts about it changing the world. That's why I'm f afraid of LSD. <laughs> yeah, no, I love LSD. Yeah, I've, I've always been a kind of a person that, I call it the Jim Morrison theory, if you put it in front of me, I'll take it for most of my life. I'm better now. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, is there any story behind the song Prohibition, the Fourth Amendment? Or? Oh, well, uh, when you get pulled over in the U.S., um, there's a law that they can't search your car. It's a Fourth Amendment. You, have, you, have, uh, you can prevent them from illegal search and seizure. And so in the U.S. they'll give, marijuana organizations will give kids these cards that they can just pull out and give to police. So it was partially about that. And then we were making a list in the studio high of all the strains we loved. And so we called, it, it was a jammy kind of instrumental. And I'm like, well, let's call Erica, who is a, the woman that did the vocals was in a great band called Lost Goat. And... Uh, we call, we were in San Francisco, we called her up, she came in and read all the strains. And then the Fourth Amendment was more trying to let kids know you have rights when you get pulled over. When they say, can I search you, your car, you can say no. Especially if you don't have drugs, because then when they do, they're wasting money and they won't be let to do it as much because they're wasting money. Because everything in the fuck stupid U.S. is about money you know if if we're doing this and catching people we make money from them if we don't catch anybody doing this we don't make money and we cost our government or the city or the state money so and there is a song uh, 666 bonk session and the quote which says like uh, uh, any one of these corn rows may hide thousands of dollars of worth of marijuana so where is that quote coming All from? All over the Midwest where we grew up, there's what we used to say, you plant three corn plants, one marijuana, three corn plants, one marijuana. And this is all over India and Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan. Like this is a common practice among farmers to make more money. Yeah. Uh, but so where is that sample uh, from? I mean, in the samples, I think from a... Uh, um, uh, PBS, which is public broadcasting in the U.S., uh, special about marijuana. Uh, and uh, since your uh, music has a lot of these samples, is there any particular movie that you had a lot of uh, quotes from? Or uh, A lot of them are documentaries. Uh, yeah, um, I think most of them have been documentaries, and I'll just be watching something. We took we took a quote. Uh, there's been a few movie quotes, uh, but I'll just be watching stuff, and it'll strike me that that'll fit somewhere. Or holy shit, I didn't really even I didn't so involved with marijuana realize that one out of five prisoners in the U.S. is a marijuana you know convicted of a marijuana crime. You know, so it'll be stuff that strikes me and it comes from all over. Yeah, yeah. And how much people get for like uh, two grams of marijuana in prison? It depends where you are now. Many places, not anything. Like where we live, they would just take your weed and give you maybe a $150 fine. But some places that are not tolerant at all, you could end up in jail for maybe a year or two for that little amount of marijuana that sucks so much yeah yeah in in previously to the legalization of uh pot and so now there's five states in the u.s that pot is straight up legal anybody could you could come visit go to a shop and buy it so since then other states have calmed down so I'm not sure how many places are left that you can get arrested for a small amount. That's five out of 50, right? Right, but, but 36 have legalized medicinal marijuana, so we're on the verge of the whole country being legal. So, so more pot, no wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is uh, HP Keith Maker's song about? Uh, it's about Keith, so when you uh, use a silk screen and shake marijuana buds, Keef, it's the powder, it's pure THC. Yeah. 
It's a, a, a friend of ours. We were in Denver, Colorado, and he tried, as many kids over the years have tried to do, tried to smoke me under, like, till I can't smoke anymore. So we literally were up all night smoking Keef. Pot, bong after bong of Keef. And he's like, are you done? And I'm like, no, let's go. So then I just slept in the van that day to the next city. <laughs> and uh, are you used to playing live uh, while on marijuana or cash? I'm not used to not being high. That's what freaks me out, the rare times when I'm not high. So I'm very used to being high. It's very comfortable when we're high. And if we're all high the same amount, it's it causes a psychicness that I don't think would happen without marijuana. I mean, I don't know because we've never tried. <laughs> and, uh, what is like the ultimate uh, Bongzilla riff? <sighs> to me, that blows your mind away. Mine, my favorite, uh, Grim Reefer, I'd say, because it's super repetitive, and that to me is what marijuana smoking is. You you need something you like. Like it can be stupid to most people but it could be funny to you and, it, and you'll repeat it over and over and just giggle about it for a ritual hours. yeah 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 exactly and in the whole thing of bongzilla to me is ritualistic is 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 maybe ironic is that is because we're it's so pot involved that i think most people that maybe don't like it look at it as kind of a joke and when you meet us, you realize it's not a joke in that we're just telling you stories about our lives or, or observations or, or, you know, not where, yeah, yeah. And uh, can you tell me some, uh, what are the albums that you're currently listening to? Uh, the Last Floor record, to The Last Torch record. Uh, Graves at Sea, Zoraster. I mean, there's always, always listening to Skinnerd and Black Sabbath and Zeppelin and shit. But uh, of newer stuff, uh, Beast Beastmaker. They they freaked me out recently. Uh, huh? We I listen to a lot of country too, like like uh, Marty Robbins and Roger Miller and shit. Yeah, I'm not listening to a lot of music like us a lot of the time. That's cool because uh, you would get fed over with it. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love I Hate God. I always listen. And they're friends of ours. Sleep is, you know, cavity. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is your opinion on uh, Sleep's uh, Vol. 1 record? The first one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that record too as a four piece. Yeah. I, I like it. I like everything Sleep's ever done, to be honest, yeah. Uh, it's kind of psychedelic, or yeah. it's not yeah. just... Uh, to me, yeah, there's a lot. They used to co be called Asbestos Death, too. Yeah, that band is uh, kind of uh, like and that. It's the same members as what turned into the first Sleep record, correct? Yep. And it's a little more punk rock with weird psychedelics to it that they kind of went away from. They're still very psychedelic to me in a in an overwhelming, wrap you like a blanket way. <laughs> and uh, what, is, uh, what are like your three favorite albums? Of all time, who? Make it five. Who, you just made it too harder. Uh, uh, Masters of Reality by Black Sabbath. Uh, uh, Nothing Fancy by Leonard Skinner. Take, take is Needed by for pain by by uh, uh, I hate God, dope smoker by sleep. In through no 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 physical graffiti by Led Zeppelin. It's great album. Um, it's kind of dark and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So yeah. for them, it's very dark. Yeah. And, uh, what do you think about Snoop Dogg? Ah, uh, I. I would like to sit and smoke pot with him for a couple days straight, but I don't listen to a lot of his music, but that he, not unlike we did, took a genre of music and made it all about marijuana is pretty sweet. Or for the, I mean, we once were reviewed early on at, that we made Cypress Hill look like straight edgers. So, 
you know. <laughs> I drove back to, past the park that Snoop uh, killed a guy in in L.A., <laughs> but I don't often think about Snoop too much. <laughs> is, there, is there any, like, uh, I don't know, connection between stoner metal and all this uh, hip-hop weed culture? Except for weed. I think weed. And, and that these beats and their music is probably as much based in, in blues as ours is. I mean, oddly enough, the most sampled drummer ever, James Brown's old drummer, Clyde Stubblefield, lived in Madison, Wisconsin, where we live, till he died, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pentatonix is the shit. Yeah, yeah, in, in, in yeah. I, and, uh, uh, I'm forgetting of the musical word, uh, And where you're like off the beat, uh, syncopation, syncopation. There we go. Drums. That's just yeah, yeah. That's just the marijuana talking. Yeah, and uh, is there any like news about uh, the uh, the new Bongzilla album? Uh, we're halfway done writing it. Uh, yeah, I hopefully within the year, and you'll see us back here in like a year. How is it going to sound like? I think it's going to sound like Bongzilla. There's, there's so far to me, it's like a mix of like a new take on what we were doing a little bit because we hadn't played in 10 years. So we all had been playing music of different variations. I have another band called Dos Malas that's real flourish. If you heard Floor, the band Floor, uh, you should check them out. They're really cool. Uh, but yeah, so I think I think it'll sound like Bongzilla. Yeah. Uh, who came up with the name Bongzilla? I mean. uh, Me and the first bass player, I wanted to call the band God Bong, or no, Bong God, but it was really hard to say. <coughs> and we were just sitting there smoking, and he goes, Bongzilla, and I went, that's the fucking name. Yeah, and do you have something to say to the Serbian fans or uh, Bongzilla fans around the world? Yeah, start growing pot, and smoke it, and share it with everyone, and... It will, yeah, change your world. So thank you so much for You're this welcome. interview. Thank you guys. So that's it, my friends. Like, share, subscribe, or die.